Welcome back to another video. In this one, we have some walleye catch in action, and we're gonna share some tips on one of the absolute best tactics that you can use to catch walleyes from this point going forward through the rest of the season. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it right off to Joel Nelson. Nice little walleye. Probably gonna eat this one for dinner. It's just a perfect little eater. Anytime you're fishing the dog days, having a puppet minnow tied on is a really important part of your strategy for that reason alone. You're cruising around and fish, you gotta remember, this time of year are at the peak level of aggression. Their metabolism is firing. They're willing to chase when you put the right thing in front of them. And that puppet minnow is a great reaction bait. So this is the time of year to really get aggressive. And anytime I see marks off the bottom, 18, 20, 22 feet of water, off the edges of some of the structure that I'm fishing for panfish, I've always got that puppet minnow ready to pitch. It's just worked really well for me over the years bass, pike, walleye, but hey, these hooks were unmistakable. I knew exactly what these were. So we're gonna try and line that spot up again, maybe get another one. Now, one thing that I love about the puppet minnow is just how efficient it is. It's a bigger bait that's really heavy and falls super quickly. So you can use your electronics, find a pot of fish, maybe a, maybe a big single fish, cast out to it, and that bait's gonna get down there really quick. A few rips, you're gonna know whether or not that fish is gonna be willing to bite, and then you can move on. So that's really nice. You can fish it quickly um, and sample a bunch of different spots with it. Um, but another thing that's really cool about it is the fact that it does seem to catch bigger fish sometimes, which is cool. It's a good tool for catching that kicker size walleye. So you're gonna see that here. This next fish that Joel catches is definitely the nicest one of the day. This looks like it might be a real one, Joel. We knew lightning would likely strike twice. These fish are down there, and we saw them rolling off the edge. It's a big one, Joel. Just amazing how well these puppet minnows work. Oh, Ooh, that's a really big one. <laughs> <laughs> this one absolutely tattooed it as well. Oh, there's another one with it. I've not no seen way. that out here. That no lie. Awesome. That's like a 28 inch. Let's get my buddy in the net, huh? And that's... maybe that's aggressive. Well, Ooh. it's pretty big. Hey, Girl. <laughs> yeah! I love this bait. Like I said, it's a 12 month a year bait. You keep this one just tied on and you're gonna be happier for it. This fish, when I say you can feel them hit on a slack line with braid, I could have been fishing with rubber line and it wouldn't have mattered. This fish, I would have felt it no problem. There you go, pal. Look at that fish. Thank you, Mike, for the net job. Good work. Yeah, let's see that thing in the sun. That's oh, a beauty. Just a beautiful fish. Well, you like, know, the real quick. Yeah. But like you've seen it uh, now on the social channels yep. on the website here for the last week. Yeah. We call it puppet minnow season. Yeah. It's officially started. <laughs> it's on. And the coolest part about this is when I set the hook on that fish, it could have been a walleye. It could have been a five pound bass. Really just about everything loves this, but walleyes have a special affinity for it. And we know what we've been seeing on the edge of these cribs. We know we've been seeing some of these bigger hooks wallow and roll around here. They're out here for the same reason the bluegills are here. There's a lot of life. There's minnow life. There's all kinds of aquatic invertebrates. There's just so much going on outside these cribs and brush piles that good walleyes like this one are here for a reason. So I'm gonna get her back because this is a beautiful fish. Next up, Joel's gonna share his absolute Favorite model of the Puppet Minnow, he's gonna talk about size and color. This is the bait for me. Uh, it's a Puppet Minnow, it's a size four, it's in that purple Wonder Bread color. I love it for a lot of reasons. It's it's a bait that accurately depicts really small tulipy on deep, clear northern lakes. It works out really well in southern lakes, like I'm fishing right now because it's so visible. And whether you're fishing it in clear or turbid water, it's a great profile that matches a lot of the minnows that these fish are eating right now. So this is a bait I have tied on 12 months a year. It's really just that simple. If I'm fishing river systems in the winter or into the spring, it's a great bait to get down and raid them. In the fall and in the summer, like we were talking about, it's just great off the edges of weed lines, deep rocks. Fall seasons, when you've got all those bait fish congregations on the river into winter, yeah, I'm fishing it then too. So this rod combination, this lure, Puppet minnow in a purple Wonder Bread size four. Yeah, always stays hooked up. Now Joel is gonna demonstrate how he works the bait to get bites. So my puppet minnow jigging cadence isn't anything too crazy. It's actually very simple. Oftentimes I'm pitching at fish I've already seen. It's either on a live forward view kind of sonar 
or it's just simply off the edge of side imaging. I drop a waypoint, I swing back around, and I usually just do a small underhand pitch. Take out a little bit of slack, and I let it settle down on a semi-tight line. So I'm kind of chasing this thing down to bottom. I'm watching that V ripple, and then somewhere in that, I'm gonna end up giving it a little pop of line, and then a little pop off the bottom. And I like putting my elbow under the butt section so I can just get a little bit extra lift. Again, chasing it down on a semi-tight line, semi-tight line. I'll alternate between letting it rest on bottom or just letting it get to the edge of bottom before I give it another pop. And it's just amazing. So often, you see fish, you catch fish with this bait. Go ahead and cast it out, let things settle, and you're usually gonna get hit on the rip up. So that's the only thing you really need to be aware of when you're fishing a puppet minnow. You gotta be ready for that, that hook set. A lot of times it just comes on this. So if you feel any resistance coming off the bottom, you just gotta get to the reel real quick, hold the rod tip fairly high, let a longer rod with the appropriate action do the work. I like somewhere in a moderate to moderate fast action. So bends that rod over in a more parabolic style curve, keeps that fish buttoned up all the way to the boat. Uh, again, a bait I fish all year round, especially in the summer, especially for what we're doing right now to catch walleyes like I just did. Now the cool thing about puppet minnows is you can catch walleyes on them pretty much all season long, but right now is when things start to really heat up. Once you get to the middle of summer, second half of summer, and then through fall, it just seems like the bite gets better and better. So that's one thing that I really like about it, but I'm gonna pass it off to Joel now. He's got another walleye, and he's gonna talk a little bit about why he likes puppet minnows right now. So you go into this time of year. What's he wanna do, Joel? He doesn't know yet. He didn't even know he's hooked for a little bit here. I just rolled another one too. And while we were fighting the last one, we saw another fish. So it just goes to show you, you know, as fish start to work their way off the shorelines in the spring, they get out to some of this mid lake stuff. They start to school up. Great fish. And a fish like this isn't just fun to catch. It's absolutely a blast just to be able to observe how this bite's working out. I love fooling fish. I love the puzzle, solving the puzzle, putting the pieces together to figure out how to catch fish like this. And when I get guys like Mike to untangle everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Just another chunk. Like I said, I just rolled another one before this one. And once you get lined up on these things, that's what I've really noticed. Like as our understanding of electronics has gotten better, our ability to fish these baits better with, you know, rods and reels that are designed to do exactly what they're designed to do for this bait in particular. It just gets easier and easier to be able to target the schools of these fish. And it's really rewarding to have a see them, then catch them kind of bite where they show up visually on the graph, you throw a bait out at them, a couple jerks, and you're already hooked up. And really, that's what it's all about. I have a great time feeling that thump, setting the hook, bringing these fish in. Again, 12 month of year bait, a puppet minnow. That's my guy. Next up, Joel's gonna share what he's looking for in his rod reel line setup whenever he's ripping puppets this time of year. So my setup for fishing puppet minnows is pretty simple. Actually, the Legend Tournament Walleye Series for St. Croix has a rod for these style of baits. And the key hallmark to it is a couple different things. Chief amongst them being length. It's a seven foot one rod. It's really nice to be able to have that extra length Again, when you pick up the bait off bottom and there's already one on it, you really need to stay real. You, st you need to leverage that fish as much as possible to keep it buttoned up. The next key to this rod style and design is that it's a medium power, moderate fast action. Again, like I was saying, it has kind of a more parabolic curve. It bends further back into the rod blank to give you even more leverage for these fish because these are heavy baits. When you, when you get a walleye boat side, and it's head shaking and there's pandemonium on the surface. It's kind of a challenge at times to keep them buttoned if your rod action is too fast. It doesn't have the give that you need boat side especially. So being able to have a faster action uh, isn't always a better thing when you're fishing puppet minnows. I like a moderate action and that's why this rod is absolutely perfect for it. Line, I like it pretty simple. I do like braid because I do sometimes feel fish hit it on the drop. I can feel a slack line hit much better with braid. And I tie a little fluorocarbon leader in. If I'm fishing puppet minnows all day, 
I will at times tie in a swivel, but typically I'm not fishing them hard all day. I'm fishing around, I'm looking for fish. I see a few fish at target, boom, I pitch out that puppet minnow and away we go. If I was fishing it exclusively all day, only that bait, I'd probably tie a little tiny, tiny swivel in, I don't know, anywhere from three to five foot up just to try and correct for some of that line twist. But for the most part, it's not an issue when you're talking about braid in a fluorocarbon leader. So uh, real, really any kind of reel that's got a pretty stout drag so you can crank it down a little bit for the hook set, yet still enjoy a little bit of flexibility if the fish takes a run. That's a nice thing to do. A lot of times I'll just back reel if I need to on a, on a puppet minnow because again, you, the worst thing you can have with these kind of baits is a fish on the surface thrashing too much, too hard, creating too much slack back and forth. The weight of that bait actually wants to propel it out of the fish's face. So that's what you're fighting with a rod, reel, and line design like you have right here. Well, that's about all we got for you in this one. Special thanks to Joel for sharing a bunch of good info. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future. So until then, we will see you in the next one.